Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some awesome things you can do with Dollar Tree burner covers. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. For this project, you're going to need, of course, a stovetop cover and one of those foam rings from the Dollar Tree. You can find them in the floral section and I'm just removing the sticker off of them. You can leave it on if you want to. I don't know why I removed it. I just felt like I needed to. And then you're going to go ahead and take some masking tape. Love to craft with masking tape. For those of you that are new, I always say that in my videos because you will see me frequently using masking tape. It's paintable. It it's pretty sticky, it tears, it just does the job for me. I've been using it my whole life for crafting, but this is how we're gonna go about making the surface of this more adhesive so that hot glue can stick to it because the stovetop covers are a little bit shinier than I'm comfortable with. You can use any paint that has a porous surface for this. I'm not sure I'm not sure duct tape would, it seems to me I used duct tape once and it didn't hold as well because you know how duct tape is like a little shiny. I think you, you're just stick with masking tape. You could also use the blue painter's tape, but just something more paper like so that it provides a nice porous surface for the hot glue to stick to. And I just took the ends and I'm bending it over. This is the top part. You're going to see me flip this around and do the bottom part as well. So just make sure that the tape is nice. You can see me going around here and just push it in. You have to make sure it's stuck really well everywhere. Try to avoid air pockets. That's what I was doing when I was going around and around there with my thumbs. And then I turned it upside down because we're also gonna be doing the inside as well. Now, after I was done, I realized I probably didn't have to do the whole underside. I did just in case I needed to, I guess, because I'm filming, but since you get to see this ahead of time, you can decide where you want to put your tape. If that, that will make sense at the end, you'll see. So you're going to be gluing the foam ring on the top part of the burner, and then you're gonna go ahead and flip it over. After I flipped it over, I'm just applying gentle pressure to make sure that the glue has really, I guess I want it to be glued down level as much as possible but you have to be careful not to press down too hard if you've ever touched one of these burner covers ever before you will know that they're very flimsy and they can bend really easy so i'm just doing it gently next i'm going to take some sisal rope i got this sisal rope from walmart at the time when i bought it which was last year it was about five dollars and 47 cents i think but of course prices are changing all the time so i don't know if it's still going to be that but it is the cheapest sisal rope that I've been able to find so far but again sometimes things come up on Amazon and they're temporary like they'll be really cheap and then they'll sell out really quick so just keep checking around get the best deal you can but this particular one is from Walmart it's also thinner than the sisal rope I usually work with and for this DIY you are going to want thinner sisal rope in my opinion because it will work better so what you just saw me do is start spinning this in a little spiral, but it's resistant to stay. It wants to bounce back straight. To get it going is kind of tough because you want that center to have no hole in it. It has to be super tight. See how it's super tight in the middle there and you don't see any kind of gap or hole. So you really have to press and a little bit of hot glue comes in handy. I glued the ends and kind of spun it with my fingers to hold them all together. And then I pushed really hard to make the coil and I glued wherever I needed to to hold it together. And when I got a pretty decent spiral, you saw me glue in the grooves around each little, I don't know if it's called a groove, but not on top of the rope. You saw me do it, yeah, it would be grooves, it would be where the sisal rope meets the next sisal rope in each loop that you make. And I did that on what's going to be the underside. So of course this top side here doesn't have that glue on, but that really helps get it going, trust me, and hold it together so that it doesn't wanna keep coming undone. Then you find the center of that burner cover. I'm using the larger one for this DIY. They come in a set of two. There's a large one and a small one. And because sisal rope is not as soft as like the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, it did require pretty much glue for every single loop. So you are gonna need to have plenty of hot glue, but the results are very beautiful as you will see at the end. I think this looks a little bit better than nautical rope. And because it's also firmer and harder, 
it works better for the purpose of what we're making right now. So that's what you're going to see me do here is just go around and around. And it probably took me honestly an hour. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's not a quick process because you have to keep putting glue and you have to keep gluing it down. I'm, this is in real time. I didn't speed it up. So you can kind of see that I was very patient getting the glue as close to possible as, you know, to the each loop. I wanted to put it on the inside and just covering the top of this tray. Next, you're going to turn it sideways and you will be going up the sides with this and you will actually be going past the sides. So I did about three rows and now you can see right at the top there, do you see the very top how it's above the burner cover? That gives you something that you can glue onto, I guess. It, it makes the transition from the inside to the outer edge smoother it gives you a nice little lip as well a decorative lip but you're just going to go ahead and cover the outside as well all the way down the sides and then finish it off by cutting it at an angle i take my scissors and i didn't show you but i actually cut it at an angle and tuck it under so you can't see it but this is what it looks like when we're all done and then it is very hairy you guys i use scissors i tried a razor blade someone came on a year and a half ago and told me you can do it with a razor blade but honestly this is like a grass it smells really pretty like sweet hay and in the end a little bit of flame you just move quickly so you don't burn anything worked the best scissors and flame but the reason i used the smaller sisal rope is it actually creates a much flatter surface for your little decorative items but look at that that is so high-end looking and nobody would ever know that is a dollar tree burner cover So now I want to show you another take on this same trick with the burner cover where you're just going to cover it with masking tape. You know the drill. And here's the sisal rope I'm using in this one. This is a much thicker sisal rope that I got off of Amazon. And for this particular craft, I thought it was better. And this time you are putting it on the top of the burner cover, not on the bottom. And I use the flame to burn it off. Same thing. Then I just cut four even pieces of lath from Home Depot it was redwood lath, but actually now at Dollar Tree, they have this kind of wood and I think it's much better. It's much thicker and nicer and I think it would stain nicer. So I recommend you get this if you can find it in your Dollar Tree, but you're just gonna go ahead and stain it. I mixed an acrylic water-based stain that I have listed down below in my description box. I love it because it doesn't smell. I use wax or whatever I have, but I had this at the time. I mixed it with a bit of black paint because I wanted a really dark walnut color. You can use any color you want, but then you literally are just going to take these and glue them onto the bottom side of the burner cover right there. And if you didn't guess, we are making a stool. So this is what I like about the Dollar Tree wood better. It's thicker, so it would give you a better base I guess more base and this is also why as you can see I put a little bit of masking tape on the bottom of the burner as well to make sure again that the glue had something to adhere to if it's just decorative which is what mine was it's perfectly fine you don't need it to be you know strong enough for someone to sit on but look at how cute this came out I absolutely loved this DIY smaller stovetop cover some of those little makarachi beads <laughs> and one a little terracotta plant pot now that wasn't from the dollar tree but i have seen both large and small terracotta pots come out during summer so you can keep your eye open or you can substitute that with something else it doesn't have to be terracotta it could be a plastic one but just a little bottom for this and we start by spray painting those two items white i did spray paint the beads but i didn't have great luck with coverage and I didn't want to waste any more paint so I brought them in and you saw me painting them white the rest of the way as well. Now to make sure this bottom sticks to the top I'm adding some masking tape.
I took some hot glue, stuck those beads on, and again, I was shocked they stuck really hard on there because when I went to try and remove them, I realized I really couldn't, and that was just on the paint. So I did spray it with the Rust Oleum White Primer Matte. But essentially it's just a paint that guarantees a little bit more adhesion than just regular spray paint so it gives you a lot more options as far as what surfaces you want to cover with spray paint now if you watched my halloween video i showed you how to take a plastic tray well it could be any material but i showed you how to do really realistic faux wood grain using four colors but it occurred to me some of you may not have that much arsenal in your craft supplies and it would be nice to show you how you can also make wood grain using just one color. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be using Territorial Beige from Apple Barrel Paint and as you saw I did one coat of super dry brushing. That was it. Now I'm taking a baby wipe and I am touching it feather light like barely barely touch it just go over it until you see it kind of smearing and staining your surfaces just like you see here on the camera and I'm going to add a little bit more on the bottom and because it's slimy I notice it just kind of does a beautiful smear on its own with my paintbrush so first you do one dry brush then you do the wipe where you just smear it a bit then you go over it with another dry brush then you do the wipe and then a final dry brush and this is what you end up with you guys and it's a beautiful color of faux wood it's very three-dimensional even though you only used one color now the trick is to make sure though that that paint you put on is dry when you're dry brushing don't put it on too wet it needs to be dry and your feather light with the wipe over it but look at this it is so beautiful So this was a huge hit and of course you're going to need some sisal rope and a burner and some masking tape and I used wood shims. I did use a small burner by the way but you could use any size you want and of course you know the drill. I covered it with masking tape just to make it stickier. And on this DIY it was important to cover the edges completely on the underside and the top side. And I took a mix of different colors at the time and just kind of made this a woodsy color, I guess, but you could use antique wax for this, any kind of stain for that. I used territorial beige, I think, and then another creamy color on top. It wasn't a perfect match. It was just to make it look not like metal at the bottom. I'm also using the wood shims because they taper at the end and I just felt like that would make the bucket have a natural taper, but I will tell you that, okay, so I need 32 shims altogether and there's 42 in a package. I don't know what the price is now, but I will tell you that um, you could use paint sticks and I think maybe in some ways paint sticks might be better because you have a thicker end at the bottom. But the trick with this DIY, and it's really important because I got a lot of questions about this after I was done, is see that sisal rope if you choose to use nautical rope you can use whatever you want as long as it's nice and thick it has to be like a sisal rope so you can use nautical rope either the white one or the brown one you can't use a really thin twine because it wouldn't work it has to be something really hardy i did a total of four rows of the sisal rope up so i was gluing them on top of each other again to make a higher side and at the very end i do my last row which is a fifth row but I actually recommend that you be more generous with that and go up maybe seven rows. You wanna have plenty of surface to glue the sticks on and also be sure to use a really strong glue. I recommend like a hot wood glue or a Sherbonder glue. Don't get the Dollar Tree glue for this and use high heat. Some people wrote and said that 
well, it wasn't some, it was only actually one person <laughs> that wrote and said the basket wasn't holding together. And the only thing I could think of is she wasn't using high heat maybe, or she needed to go up higher on the rows on the bottom of the bucket. But what you do is you first make that four shapes right there I'm showing you. So it's like a cross. And then you're gonna add three of the either painter stick or shims in between each one of those. And then all together you'll have 16 rows at that point. And after you're done with that, you're gonna go ahead and take some twine or a rope, whatever you want, and you tie the bucket together just to pull these sticks closer. See how I'm doing that? Because I wanted my bucket to be you know, not so spread out, I guess. And you can leave that in place. I glued right over it, or actually, no, I, I'm sorry, I, I glued right above it. I did, because I remember I was able to pull it off. So I glued right above it, but then I'm adding some more of the sisal rope there to secure the bucket. And I'm showing you here, I'm putting the hot glue on the inside, on the edges of each one of these shims, and I press another shim in the middle to close it up. So you see how there's big spaces in between, that doesn't look very good. I'm just closing it up with an extra shim, and I'm showing you again what I did. See how I'm just putting it on the edge? And then I'm putting another shim down, and again, you can use painter sticks too, either one would work doing it again because I just want to make sure you you understand some people got lost on this part right here I'm just putting the hot glue on the edges just in case you need that extra part of the tutorial this bucket is very beautiful but you definitely have to have good directions and I also want to point out see how I'm gluing on the stick that's on the outer edge so there's the shims on the inside then there's the shims on the outside and my thumb is holding it down right now that's what I want you to focus on I moved my thumb, but see how the starting point, I'm pointing to it, it's only halfway on that shim. And that's because you need the other half of that stick when you come around the full circle after you've gone around the whole bucket. Otherwise you won't have anything to glue it on and your either your sisal rope or your nautical rope would be too low if you try to land on one of the sticks on the inside of the bucket and it wouldn't look nice. So I add another row of sisal rope to cover up the glue and also just give it a little more support. But I think this bucket would be cute with a higher um, row of sisal rope. I just didn't do it. And then to cover the hot glue, I go through with some burnt umber mixed with black paint and just kind of touch up here and there just to make the bucket look more worn, I guess. And that also disguised the hot glue that was showing. But it came up absolutely beautiful. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is what it looks like when it's all done. The first thing I do is take them outside and spray paint them white on the front and the back even though the back has white already you don't have to I just wanted to do that and then I take a drill I drill some holes through it's paper thin so that was so easy it's like I almost punctured them you know what I mean you probably could do it with a nail if you have something really firm don't just hammer it because you'll bend the stovetop covers because they're that thin they they're just flimsy so you have to be kind of careful on how you go about getting those holes in there but I decide that the white looks too you know just monotone now this is one of the few times you will actually see me use white shiny paint the paint I have is a gloss because I wanted to go ahead and sponge on some of the flat white paint to give it some dimension and sparkle like real snow looks when you're outside you know it's not flat it has dimension and it sparkles in the Sun so this is what I'm attempting to do I'm trying to make my snow look like real snow so the darker areas there actually shine a little bit from the spray paint and the light areas are matte so it ends up looking really really pretty and now I'm just drawing the face on now I tried to draw some eyes by you know no I just did it on my own and I erased five times it was comical and I said forget it so I ended up cutting out a shape I don't know if I have OCD or what but I wanted my eyes to be even and I wanted them to be the same shape so I did end up cutting something out and I used it to make the eyes nice and even and then I just drew a quick mouth on it 
and a little smile and I was actually using my phone I saw a face online that I thought was really really cute for a snowman and I'm copying it and I'm just filling in the eyes here with some black paint now if you live by such a hole in the wall Dollar Tree that you can't even get stovetop covers don't worry because you can still do this with a top at like pots and pans the lids you can use the lids to do this craft and you don't have to do the body of the snowman you can make just a head if you want and then glue a scarf on the bottom to kind of fill it in so don't let it stop you the handle too on the lid by the way makes a super cute nose for the snowman so don't let it stop you still make your snowman they make great door hangers for the front door and you can embellish them super super cute and of course again because my house is rustic I did some dry brushing with some pewter gray from apple barrel paint and now I'm just using the burnt umber to do the buttons which I love the way they kind of you can see the paint swirls and brush strokes that makes it look so much more rustic I thought that came out so so cute and I'm using last year's baby blanket from the Dollar Tree there in the Buffalo check I decided that this would make a super cute scarf for his neck because you got to kind of cover that little neck area there since it's not you know too flattering you, you can see the wires and I'm just gonna go ahead and use hot glue to make a scarf and then tie it around his neck and I do hot glue the scarf on places strategically so that they stay looking you know I want the scarf to look like it's blowing in the wind so I glue it in that position I glue it to be tucked under his chin and then I kind of gather it up you'll see me in a minute here I'm gonna gather it up and I'm just gonna make the scarf have the illusion that it's blowing in the wind So I'm cutting a little fringe here on the end, which I should have done first before I tied it around because it was really difficult to do it this way because everything was glued, but it worked out. But make sure you do that first. And I'm using 12 inch shims from Home Depot. I can't get that 15 inch one, even though I ordered it. For some reason where I live, they just don't get it. So these are 12 inch and I'm just taking and cutting them. Now I'm having to use a saw because I went a little bit lower than my scissors or clippers could handle because they do get thicker as they go down, they're graduated. But of course, I'm making his little black top hat. Here I'm using some masking tape and I'm going to put a little bit of back support on this little guy and I use some of the towering blocks from the Dollar Tree. You can use any piece of wood or stick to do this. You just need to raise it up a little bit because once you put them together you have to get it higher. You know you can't glue it. He's not flat because of the, the rim around the edge. And I'm using some super glue gel that fix all right there. I mean business. <laughs> this actually sits overnight with a big heavy book on top of it to make sure it dries. And I just use a painter stick and glue it down. And I'm using the same strong super glue fix all for his hat along with some hot glue because all of these things, you know, they sturdy the snowman up so that he's nice and solid and he's not going to fall apart. And there I'm gluing a little hanger on the back and I'm just going to cover it with some masking tape for some extra support. So I use one of those little Dollar Tree wood pieces for a very rustic nose for this guy. Look at that, that is so cute. And of course I'm using the heavy duty glue, you guys, because I want a strong hold. So I decide this needs a little pop of color and I just put a little tiny bit of orange, but he came up super, super cute. And check this out, you guys, this is stovetop covers. You're going to need the largest stovetop cover, the Be Brave calendar, some florals, and some nautical rope. Now, you don't have to use this calendar. You can always use imagery of your choice if you don't have this calendar, but if you do, this is a great DIY. And I'm just gonna cut out the pumpkin from that calendar. And I'm going to lay down the large stovetop cover on top and cover the image as much as possible and trace around it. Now make sure you put your pencil right at the very edge there so that you get a nice clean fit and I'm just cutting it out. 
go ahead and grab your Mod Podge and we're going to be Mod Podging that image down on the stovetop cover. And just a reminder, it's the largest stovetop cover here. I love stovetop covers, you guys. When you're in the Dollar Tree, always pick those up because I always have some great idea for them. I think they are so much fun. And so we're gonna Mod Podge it down. We're gonna let it dry. And after it dries, we're gonna go ahead and edge it with a little bit of that nautical rope. Now you can use thinner twine if you want. I liked the chunky twine because the pumpkin itself is rather big and the little sections where the grooves are on the pumpkin, they also look kind of chunky. Like the whole thing for me gave it gave me kind of like a chunky feeling. I don't know why. So I just wanted to stick with the chunky nautical rope, but anything around the edge here that you guys like, you can put in there, be creative and have fun. And I'm just gluing it down. Now you will take the florals of your choosing, whatever they are, and lay it down and center it so that you get the right balance on either side with that spray coming out. And then you're gonna put a little hot glue and you're not hot gluing it to the stove top. You need to add that duct tape I'm doing right there because that's what it's gonna stick to. All you're doing is hot gluing it so that you can stick those stems together so that you have the right measurement. At least that's how I needed to do it. If you guys can do it by just looking or measuring, feel free, but I, I, I tend to do everything by eye, so for me I need to lay it down. And now I'm taking some Dollar Tree twine, and I'm just going to spin it around that center to cover those stems and that hot glue. And the purpose of that twine is to make it more adhesive for the hot glue, so the duct tape creates a surface that hot glue likes, and the twine creates a surface that hot glue likes, and voila! you can hot glue it on the top of that stove top cover without fighting it to keep it on because otherwise it's just gonna probably pop off. Now you could use a more permanent glue like an E6000. There's a couple out there now, you guys, they have lots of neat glues, but if you wanna do that and wait a little bit longer, that might work, I'm not sure. And you can also use masking tape. I just chose to use duct tape this time because it was black, but honestly, any hardcore sticky tape will work. And here I am taking some acorn lids that I collected last fall for my crafts and I'm just gluing them on the bottom. And I decide there's a little bit too much metal showing for me, so I take the Walmart twine this time and add another row on there. Now I did hold the thicker nautical rope up and it was just a little too thick. It started covering too much of the image. You know, it made the image look too far away and stuff. It was, a look, for me, now you might like it, but to me, it made it look too far away and that wasn't the look I was going for. So I went ahead and did the Walmart. It's a little thinner twine there. And I'm using a silicone makeup spatula. It's available at the Dollar Tree. If you can't find it there, it's in the link below in my description box. You can find them on Amazon. You can also find them at Walmart. And right now, I'm just taking two burlap ribbons from the Dollar Tree. One is in the traditional burlap and the other one is in green burlap. And I'm just going to make a bow for the top to cover the string that I'm going to loop through on this later in the video and that will be looped around that little handle there and that's how I hang my little wreaths or pictures and it does a really great job at covering up the loop there you can see it so I take a Dollar Tree wreath form and more of my Walmart green florals and I do an entire wreath now I'm just sticking it down in there these wreaths are perfect for that I've been doing that for decades and I don't use hot glue because I usually don't want to damage my florals or my crafting supplies so I can reuse them if I want to. And this works fine. You can also use wire and tie them on. But what I've been doing, I'm going to show you my dirty little secret here in a minute. I'm going to flip this over and show you what I've been doing for 20 years. I put something down like this on a wreath and it can be a pizza pan or something bigger with a bigger wreath form but I just use little branches from whatever florals I put around and I used masking tape to tape them to you know again the pizza pan or the picture or whatever I want them to stick to without ever doing anything permanent like glue and then I pull that little tiny loop that's on the stovetop cover through the wreath form so that it can hang on that little handle. I love 
love these tree skirts. They were definitely around last year. I did pick one up for a DIY, and if you want to follow me with my DIYs, you might want to grab one of the silver ones when you get a chance. And here we go. So here's that super cute tree skirt. We are also using a stovetop cover. We're using the small one. And I have this round from Walmart. It cost me a dollar. I'm using my antique wax to give it a stain and a wet wipe. I do use the Huggies natural wet wipes that are mostly just water for my projects. And I'm gonna dry it off really quick here. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the sticker on the tree skirt. I will tell you, I did have to use my heat gun for about three minutes. That was really on there, but it did come off and it did not leave a residue. These are also easy to bend as you saw there. You know, you can shape it if it's out of shape a little bit, so don't worry. I took my stovetop cover outside and I spray painted it with that hammered spray paint. Isn't it gorgeous? So we have to get it on top of this little tree skirt here. And... I knew that the rim on the tree skirt is just too thin and it kind of moves a little bit too much. You just needed something more substantial. So I took the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm gluing it inside. And I will say, I don't know if it's the glue I'm using or what, I did use high heat, but I tried to take the nautical rope off in one section to readjust it and it wasn't gonna come without shredding the rope. So it's definitely on there. So I'm showing you how flimsy these are. For those of you that have never dealt with these before, you need something more, again, substantial for the base. So we're gonna use the metal one because it matches and it looks beautiful when it's on. And hot glue again holds it. I'll show you in a minute here how tough it holds it on. But that's why I stained that piece of wood because for me, I thought it would look kind of cute for the bottom to kind of look maybe like dirt for this project. You could also make it look like snow. You'll see what we're going to do here in a minute, but I'm just pressing it down and look, I'm showing you, I'm trying to duck it off and it's on there. So once you do this, you do not have to worry about it coming off. It will stay there for good. And we just made a super cute riser. I love this one. And we're going to put a little mini tree farm on top of it. This is going to be my table centerpiece this year. I thought it was so cute. Now, I showed you my last video. If you see these LED Christmas lights, grab them up because they already sold out in my Dollar Tree. But that's what I decided to put in the front, but I'm showing you that you can use the other Christmas trees if you want. I just thought this was a nice look because it kind of went from taller, shorter, all the way down. But we're all done, and I think this came up so cute. If you had fun in today's video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, and until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.